Um, you know, Valibe, I'm sure you know, but yeah, uh, there's a very, uh, and, and I'm, I paraphrase Gandhi, but he said, this was something, this particular verse was very near and dear to him. He said, if all the scriptures in uh, the entire planet were to turn to ashes, and if we just remembered this one verse, it would be enough to preserve the sacred. Um, and, and so, and this also happens to be one of your favorites. And so I was wondering if we can uh, open, if I can invite you to share, start there um, and just share uh, why, why this is so meaningful to you and, and what it represents to you. So firstly, I think Jagruti were absolutely fabulous. Uh, uh, after a long time, I heard the recitation of uh, this uh, shloka and you rendered it so beautifully with so much passion, meaning English translation, wonderful. And thank you also, Nipun Bhai. I must admit, I didn't know that this was Gandhiji's favorite too. But mm -hmm. uh, just by and by, I realized that, you know, how this was the quintessence of all spiritual knowledge. All the isms of the world are contained in one shloka. Mm -hmm. So let me, without much ado, <clears throat> there is an order. And we can't recognize the order. And therefore, we try and impose our order, my ownership, my farm, my business, my reputation, et cetera, et cetera. And we fail to see this wide order, which is, you know, I mean, I, mean, I don't have to talk about it. We see the order every day, day and night, the seasons and whatnot. Since we don't understand it, we can't harmonize ourselves with it. So this... Rishi, he just summed it up. He said, just, you know, give it up. There is an order. Everything that you can see, conceive is a part of an order. And enjoy. Good part as consumers, you're born as consumers. He says, consume, no issue. It's all there to be consumed by you. But just remember, don't try and own it. Renounce it. With that sense of renunciation, that... It's like a, a stream that flows by. It does not own the land. It just flows by the land, over the land. It nourishes, it, it stars, it goes down, goes up. It just flows. Yeah. So with that attitude of just fluency into this world. And then this just beautifully, you know, kind of morphs into a kind of, uh, it is manifested in the other uh, Hindu saying, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the universe. That once you get this magic of renunciation without having to stop consuming, consume, but have the sense of renunciation, all the difficulties that come along when we lose sense of proportion, when we lose sense of ownership, all the ills come from that. A child can have anything to its heart's content and it remains uncontaminated. Mm. It's only when he wants to possess the toys. He'll go to anybody's house, break anybody's mm. toy. He doesn't make a distinction between my toy or somebody else's toy. Yeah. As long as that I does not come. And that's what renunciation is. And mm. then the second part, the last part, it says, oh, if you covet this possession, you don't renounce, you become a thief because you are not in this world hmm. to own anything. You can't own anything. So don't try and own, don't try and possess, don't try and create your own order because inevitably you will get punished in various, various ways. So hmm. I just found hmm. it, whether it is capitalism, whether it is socialism, whatever ism theory you put, it's all contained in there. Hmm. Hmm. And again, and as I, you know, it, it just came to me that in you know, such a beautiful summary, Every day, every moment, you can apply it and make your life blissful and easy. Mm 